So how do we use Atkinson and Schifrin's uh, multi-store model of memory um, to explain how a performer may use their memory um, to help receive and pass during a game? All right, so what I want to do um, is, is certainly get a mark within my first line um, in terms of, of the answer. So I'm not going to waffle. I'm just going to get straight into the, to the answer and hopefully pick up, part, um, pick up marks from the mark scheme. Um, so here we go, here's my, here's my first uh, couple of sentences. The three sensory systems, vision, audition, and proprioception, will gather information from the display uh, using the eyes, ears, and muscle stroke balance receptors. Um, then I explain what the display is. It consists of all stimuli available to the performer. It's a large amount of sensory information. It's stored for a short time, up to one second, in the short-term sensory store. So I've mentioned the display, I've mentioned short-term sensory store, and I've mentioned the sensory systems, all within that first paragraph, um, potentially picking up two or three marks. Okay, next part. Using hockey as an example, because I want to show that I can apply this um, first bit of understanding. Using hockey as an example, this could include information about the position of players, the angle of the pass, or the speed of the pass. It could also include information that's irrelevant, such as the distant conversation of supporters, the scoreboard, the colour of the referee's trainers, or any other piece of sensory data. So basically the display is everything that the performer could attend to if they chose to. Um, but of course the next bit explains why we, we discard, uh, discard some of that. Okay, selective attention. I'll start a new paragraph here because I'm going on to a new point, a new piece of information. Selective attention is the mechanism that filters this information for use. Experience uh, helps this process whereby the key pieces of sensory information are selected and the irrelevant information is discarded as noise, which is not needed to produce the skill. The relevant information is encoded or sent into the short-term memory, which is sometimes known as the workspace. The capacity of short-term memory is 5 to 9 items, and its duration is 18 to 30 seconds, without rehearsal. It's important to note here that sport's constantly changing, and the performer rarely gets the chance to experience rehearsal unless in coaching situations, where they can just keep repeating the, the same skill to, to learn it and, and get better at it. I then again need to apply the practical example. In the hockey example, these key items of information when receiving the ball would be the speed and direction of the ball, including how far it's travelling, the location of the performer in relation to other players that the performer may pass to, uh, defenders who could influence the reception of the ball, and possibly their specific position on the pitch, both the player's uh, position, the defender's position, and teammate's position. Um, of course, I don't have to mention all of the, the points that I think are relevant here, but certainly a selection of them. Okay, I'm then going to create another new paragraph because I'm making a new point. Um, each of these factors um, could have associated information with them, such as the sprinting speed of the nearest defender. But these details become chunked. I've identified chunk there because what I've done now is, is gone to a new section. Or I'm not talking about a new part of the, um, the model. I'm just talking about a particular aspect, hence the new paragraph. Okay, so chunking is the process whereby we chunk um, complicated information into more simple pieces or bigger pieces of information so that we allow the extension of the capacity of short-term memory. Um, through experience, these items become chunked more effectively, which also helps to reduce processing or reaction time. The short-term memory or workspace essentially deals with the current situation and uses long-term memory for two main purposes. Firstly, the experience is stored in long-term memory, such as the previous game against this opponent. In many occasions, the ball will have been received in similar situations, and the coaching points that have been learned over time. This prior knowledge is compared to the current situation. Okay, Not many of you mentioned comparison, um, and that's the, the main purpose, really, of long-term memory. Um, it's compared to the current situation through a process of decoding the information back into short-term memory from long-term memory. Once the comparison is made, the performer can produce an effective and appropriate response. I'm going to start a new paragraph again here. 
um, because I'm making a separate point about long-term memory. The long-term memory also stores motor programs and schema for the production of skills in the hockey game. Sequences of skill production that have been overlearned and refined and adapted over time can then be retrieved at speed to fit with the current situation that short-term memory is processing. The success or failure of the chosen response can then also be stored, which will, in, in time, um, refine those schema further. Okay, uh, so let's give a practical example. For example, if the hockey player ran towards the ball rather than relaxed in receipt of the pass, they may miscontrol the ball and would then store the failure, thereby refining their schema or executive motor program further. Um, and of course, that would be ready for the next time they, they use it or need to use it. And I've just summarised here, it doesn't necessarily get any great marks, um, but I've just summarised that the hockey player uses both their short and their long-term memory together in order to produce the effective response. I'm reading it back, I could have potentially put a, another practical example here uh, when I'm talking about chunking um, from hockey, so let's just put that one in. An example of chunking in hockey could be the uh, former chunking of the stance of the player um, with his stick position. Okay, that should be okay. An example of chunking in hockey could be the former chunking the stance of the player along with his stick position um, when he's trying to close the performer down as he receives the ball. Um, so we might see the defender and we can detect over time through experience that their stance and stick position could influence whether a tackle's coming in or not. Um, so I hope that explains it. Um, now, for this question, or a similar question to this, we'd be looking at about 10 marks, and that's usually split between five or six marks for key pieces of information that you've included and you use the model to guide what those pieces of information are and then four or five marks based on the practical applications where you've given the examples through the relevant sport that's identified.